the topic for today is the second derivative test. This corresponds with section 4.4 .4 in our textbook. So the second derivative test, like I said, when we did the first one, this isn't the first in long sequence, it's our test using the first derivative. This test uses the second derivative to also find the same outcome, maximums, minimums. So we are going to find maximums and minimums using the second derivative. Uh, so looking for the same information but using the second derivative to as a test for that information. So we have f is a function such that f prime is c equals zero. So if f prime equaling zero as c, this means we have a critical number. All right. The second derivative of f exists on the open interval. So it's a twice differentiable function. The first derivative equals zero. If f double prime of c is greater than zero, then f c is a relative minimum. Because if you have a positive second derivative, you have concave up behavior. If you have the first derivative equaling zero as a critical number, that critical number corresponding with concave up behavior results in a minimum. If f prime c is double prime, sorry, f double prime c is less than zero, then we have maximum because if you have concave down and a critical point, the derivative equals zero, you have a maximum at that point. So it's another way to find maxes and mins. Me personally, I prefer the first derivative test, but sometimes the information they give you kind of moves you towards using the second derivative test. For example, they say here are some critical numbers, critical numbers at x equals 2, 3, and 4, and here's the second derivative. So which of these are maximums, minimums? So if they give you that information, they give you critical numbers, and they give you the second derivative, then use second derivative test, why not? But I always default to first, if I'm not given any kind of nudge one way or the other. So find the relative extra for f of x using the second derivative test. So let's find our first derivative, f prime of x equals negative 15x to the fourth plus 15 x squared set it to zero to a grid common factor so 15 x squared leaves you with x squared minus one so we have x equals zero positive negative one so grid common factor right here GCF, and then the zero product property right there. And we have our critical numbers. So now let's find the second derivative. And I'm going to go back to the first line of our first derivative right here. Use that to find the second derivative. So negative 60x plus, so x cubed plus 30x. And then do some grid to come to factor, factor out to negative 30x. These we with half of that x squared. Sorry, I'm 
My mental math is probably not so good. All right. Maybe it's because the kids did wake me up overnight. I'm too rested. <laughs> I'm not all harebrained and crazy. <laughs> all right, so we have our boundaries. We have our critical numbers. We have three of those. So three boundaries. What to have? So, my bad, only two, because these are going to be critical numbers, so three tests, those are our semi test points, so I need three columns. So, F double prime of negative one, think about that. F double prime of zero, think about that. And F double prime of positive one. We're gonna look at those three. So let's plug those into the factored form of the second derivative, so negative one. Negative one is the negative thirty, that's gonna be a positive. Negative one into direct word no minus one, that's also gonna be positive, so overall positive we have concave up. Now plugging the zero, negative thirty x times zero is zero. This would be a negative, but overall it's gonna be zero and hmm. Don't really have a classification with that based upon the second derivative test, the um gray box. It's only for positive, negative, second derivative is now for zero. So we'll look at that. So now plugging in positive one, positive one times negative 30, negative, positive, multiple of the together, negative, so we have concave down behavior. So the concave up, you have a relative minimum at x equals negative one. You have a critical number, sorry, you have a zero slope, the first derivative equals zero, and you can't give up, so put those two ideas together, have a little min. Here, zero slope, but can't give down, relative maximum, at x equals one. And for this question mark, I mean, you kind of think it's now they're maximum in, but if you really want to know for sure, go back to the first derivative test. And you'll find, much as you can assume right now, it's neither. Max or min. All right, so kind of an example of how the second derivative test works. No. By this point, going through all these sections, you are walking, talking, graphing calculator. So. Given information, you can decide what the graph looks like pretty accurately. So down here, this table, if f, sorry, x, fx, f prime x, f double prime x, we have all these values in here. So use those values to look at the examples a, b, c, and d. But my advice is kind of diagram make some notes to be first. What do all these values mean? So for example, in the F prime column, we have positive one. That means you have increasing behavior. F prime column, we have zero. The critical number. Negative, decreasing behavior, zero, critical number. Positive, increasing behavior, undefined, ooh, 
Remember? Because again, remember it's happened where the first derivative equals zero or the first derivative is undefined. And three, increasing behavior. Now we'll do the same for the second derivative. Negative two, can't give down. Negative one, also, can't give down. Zero for the second derivative. That is a possible point of inflection. For two, can't give up. Three, can't give up. Zero, again, possible point of inflection. And five, can't give up. So, do yourself a favor, kind of mark up what you know about this graph. And now it should be much more apparent where relative minimums occur, relative maxes, point of inflection. Ooh, question D, an equation of a tangent line. I think we've seen that before. So same idea, but different context, okay? And for each question, or at least three of them, justify. Why is it that? So take a look at those and check my complete notes online.